how would you describe this with your creative stone, the kind of consistency? It's not... Oh, um, I would say Thanks. the consistency of acrylic paint. Does that help anybody? No. That helps <laughs> no one. Maybe one, but for your artists out there. Today, we're going to be making double chocolate protein pancakes, obviously vegan. We love pancakes. Love. Mostly, well, the butter and the syrup. Yeah. Mostly the butter. It's kind of a vessel for butter. I'm, I'm definitely more syrup than butter, but. More butter than syrup. So we're, we're a perfect team. Yeah. These are really great because obviously, a lot of people love pancakes, it's a great breakfast, but to be able to sneak that protein powder in there is really important and really helpful way to get your protein in at breakfast. And these are very portable, you can make them small, they're a little bit rich, especially if you go with the double chocolate, which you don't have to, but we love chocolate chips. We have a lot there waiting to pour into our batter. So if you make them smaller, you just throw them in a bag, take them with you, you can have them in the fridge and heat them up or not. They're really, really great to have as a snack, really filling, keep you full for a long period of time, which is great for us because we're always on the go and to and from training. And it's even something you can just have right before training because while it keeps you full, it doesn't feel heavy at all. And these are light and fluffy, which you want from your pancake, but maybe you don't always find from a vegan pancake and from a protein pancake. So we've got it all. We've got it all. And Tony, as a vegan for you on the breakfast scene, mm -hmm. is this probably one of the easiest ways to get protein in at breakfast? Yeah, I would say so. Um, so I typically want to hit that 30 grams of protein in my breakfast. So this is a really good way to help ensure that I do that. So usually I could do, you know, a tofu scramble or something like that. But I think this is certainly one of the easiest everything in one bowl type of um, recipe that is, like you said, super simple, super easy, not too complicated and super yummy and delicious. And it's one of my favorite go-tos. I think it's cool to have those recipes. Obviously, since being inspired by Tony, I'm starting to move towards that vegan path, but I'm still a flexitarian. Mm. But I love the recipes that are easy, kind of transitional recipes is a weird word, but I think that people wouldn't know that they're vegan. And this is definitely one of those recipes where you would have no idea that there's no eggs in them. And you would have no idea that that delicious chocolate flavor is coming from protein powder. And of course we have our house of athlete vegan protein powder, which is really cool and really good. It's naturally sweetened with monk fruit and stevia. And it actually has Belgian dark chocolate, which is giving it that flavor. Yeah. So very, very luxe here. For our ingredients, we have all-purpose flour, you could throw in a gluten-free blend if you want. Um, I have tried with oat flour, but again, it's just gonna change the texture and then you're gonna have to add more milk. So this is the most basic, easiest version of the recipe. All-purpose flour, we have baking powder, whatever non-dairy milk you want. What did we go with here? Uh, today we have oat milk. So we've got our vanilla, we've got cinnamon. We like cinnamon with our chocolate always. And of course, this huge bowl of chocolate chips. And this recipe is going to make, depending on the size, of course, and how much milk or water you add, but probably about eight small to medium-sized pancakes, which is a good, a good serving size. We have a, a little bit, uh, we have some that we made before too as well. So yeah, again, super simple, very, very easy, fun to make. We're gonna do some art with our pancakes too. Yeah, very fitting because our guest is very arty. Yes, we have an artist here today. She's a singer, she designs tattoos. Also an amazing, phenomenal soccer player. Plays for the Canadian national team, over 150 caps. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. Also our Orlando Pride teammate. She's played in several countries. And an Olympic bronze medalist. Yeah. Can't forget that. And we're gonna talk to her about all of that when she helps us make our pancakes. Erin McLeod. <laughs> 
Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Come into the my kitchen. Favorite, my favorite cook's here. Yeah, we'll get you over oh, here. Oh, hey, let's do it. Are you hungry? Uh, I am actually really hungry. <laughs> I hope it does. I hope you can't hear it. <laughs> it's not growling. yet. Not okay. yet. Okay. But luckily, this is a very quick recipe. What do you usually eat for breakfast? I often, oatmeal is like my go-to, but mm -hmm. I often struggle with getting enough protein every morning. So um, yeah, so I love the concept of just throwing in some protein powder. I do that with my oatmeal sometimes, but that's my go-to every day, literally Girl, every day. Girl, you gotta switch it up. I know. <laughs> okay, well, we can get started here. We have this big mixing bowl for you. Okay. While you do that, I'm gonna okay. get the, the skillet that we're gonna need and kind of get the stove on the right temperature. Okay, so if you wanna go ahead and just throw that all-purpose flour in, that is a cup of flour. Cooking like this is great. It's yeah. <laughs> we did the hard stuff for you. Measured it for me, okay. And then a tablespoon of baking powder. Okay. That's the little white guy there, yeah. Got it. How am I doing, okay? Yes, yeah, so far so good. <laughs> It'll seem a little shaky, but. Yeah, yeah. Pinch of salt. Okay. Ooh, this is looking so Just to balance it out a little bit because we have those sweeter flavors. And then up to you, I mentioned that Tony and I love cinnamon, but no pressure if you want to just do a sprinkle or two. Just a little bit, all right, <laughs> all right. A little bit, okay. Little and bit I'm just gonna grab you a whisk. So tell us how you're feeling about being in Orlando and the Canadian national team and just everything going on this year for you and what the future holds for Aaron McLeod, 2021. Deep questions in the kitchen. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. I think last year was interesting for sports around the world, so I think... Yeah, to say the least. To say the least, uh, and it's still interesting this year, but I think it's really cool that we're all together. The team vibe seems to be really great, um, especially when we're able to do things, you know, create balance off the field, and I love the group of people that we have here. We've got incredible cooks and art nights and all these different things, which I think is really important and also the Olympics have now been postponed to this summer so um, hopefully it'll be if I can go it'll be my third and it's always an honor to represent my country so um, and playing at 38 years old 38 years young and uh, still loving uh, showing up to work every day where do you have your bronze medal I that is, is okay. it under your it sounds pillow? like you don't know you're like I, I actually have it right here no, I think. <laughs> Um, no, it's uh, a friend has it in their storage, like locked away in her house. It's in her house, so. Okay. Okay. So I just added one scoop of oh, the sorry. protein powder. Yeah. No, that's okay. That's okay. There. That's fine. <laughs> and if you want to throw in the milk, all of the milk. Yes. Okay. The oat milk. Yes, that is a cup. Yeah. Watch out. Okay. okay. I'm a goalkeeper. <laughs> Shaky hands. That's super good. Okay. <laughs> don't tell us that. All right. All right. <laughs> And I'll whisk this up if you want to add a teaspoon, Cute. so two of those, of vanilla. Okay. Two of these. Yes, please. All right. I love that we're all wearing our crystals. Absolutely. Yes. Good Tony. Energy. Yeah. Can you elaborate on the crystals? So we've gotten like really into crystals and energy. So um, mine is what? Pyrite. Allie's got the rose quartz. Love. What do you have? Um, I actually don't know the name of the crystal. She's new. I am new, but I know it's you can't be good for my creativity and, and something about truth. Okay, great. <laughs> I know my so you truth can't lie. question. There it is. I actually can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty, well, I can, but it's pretty bad and very noticeable. <laughs> well, you know, as athletes, we'll do whatever to keep us feeling strong and balanced and Absolutely. creative so when Tony introduced us to these crystals like just put it on me yeah. I also think there's something to be said about being like grounded you know mm -hmm. and like rocks and crystals yeah. all these things like keeps things. Us, yeah you were talking about a, a moist crystal the other day yes um, some people feel weird about that word but <laughs> I like the word moist and there okay. is a love crystal and you can actually feel like the moisture coming off of it I thought that love crystal did he buy it um, I did, I'm a sucker. <laughs> <laughs> that one section of Whole Foods doesn't have any rocks left. Sorry. <laughs> we, sorry to the Winter Park Whole Foods, we have bought in all of your Christmas. You need to restock though, we're coming back. All right, I whisked wow, this that's up. really well done. And this is a pretty good, I think, batter consistency. If it's, depending on the protein powder, depending on what type of non-dairy milk you use, it can always change the consistency of the batter. So. How would you describe this with your creative stone, the, 
the kind of consistency? It's not. Oh, um, I would say the, the consistency of acrylic paint. Does that help anybody? No. That helps no one. <laughs> Maybe one, but for your artists out there, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, that's fine. We'll just leave it at you hopefully did say the, the visuals guess. help. Yeah. Okay. okay, throw in the chocolate chips, please. Oh, look at how many, how much, is that like a cup? Um, you said a little less than a cup, yes. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to ask how much you should put in, and then you kind of just went for it, so. Oh, no, I never hold back on the chocolate. <laughs> going to mix this up here. And tones, yes. how's the skillet looking? It's heating up, so we should be just about ready. Um, okay, yeah. when you put on, this is uh, cooking the pancakes, because I often burn my first batch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you put it on, how high do you put the heat? Do you always put it on medium? like a medium? A medium low. Yeah. So a okay. lot of recipes will tell you medium high, and they are lying to you. Okay. They don't have your truth they stone. They are. They are. So because, all my fault. Yeah. and if you go too hot, yeah, it's you like can't really turn back because the pan, the oil is already smoking, it's burning, and the right. rest of your pancakes will have it's still edible, but have that kind of like dark color and a little bit of probably a burnt taste. So I, it does take longer, and I know pancakes, they're quick in the one sense that obviously now we're done, right. but the place where you have to definitely take your time is with the heating up of the pan. Mm, and just don't rush it. And the first batch, even if maybe it's too low, the heat, the, just do one small pancake and then eat it or not, but that's kind of your prep pancake. Okay. Just a try list. Well, now I hope I've got the temperature right. She's got this down to an art. I love it. Okay. Are we ready? I think so. So we've got our one fourth cup. This is a good size for making pancakes. Okay. And Tony, how's that uh, skillet looking? Great. Okay, let's head on over. Okay, so just gonna spray with some nonstick spray. And the spray is a really good way to keep the pan, I was gonna say moist, but that is not. What a word. Gr huh? <laughs> greased up for <laughs> each, between each batch of pancakes, because I think that's also good to get that nice golden layer on the pancakes. What do you actually spray on it if you're vegan? Um, just like a canola oil or a vegetable oil or anything like okay. that. Yeah. yeah. And butter, even vegan butter, will yeah. probably, I mean, you can use it as good flavor, but it might burn a little bit faster as well. Okay. So this is a really good option. And then you always can add the butter later. You can always Don't add worry. the butter later. Don't worry. <laughs> Give me the bowl. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Erin. Yes. Hit me. You are not only an artist, musician, soccer player, you're also a philanthropist. You just co-founded your own company, The Mindful Project, yes. and I use it as an athlete. These kind of tools are a little bit up and coming. I think it's not something that we valued as much maybe a few years ago, 10 years ago, even longer when you and I started playing. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I think the focus back then was much more on like strength training. And then we've gone to nutrition, which obviously is really cool for me and Tony, but there's this whole other side about the brain. So what is the Mindful Project and how are you using it to unlock people's potential? Oh, nice segue. Well, I think we were talking about balance before. And I think as a human being, balance is so important. But what we've seen now in the research, like these younger generations, their stress is through the roof. And obviously stress limits your potential, right? So for me personally, I started using mindfulness in my own game years ago. And mindfulness is basically observing the present moment without judgment, things that are going inside your body, outside of your body. And so like, how do you apply that to playing? So being in the present moment, like on average, only human beings are 10% of their time is in the present moment, their thoughts, which is crazy. So that's why like art and cooking, all these things, we get into this state of flow, which you hear all the time being in the zone. And it's the same when we're playing, we are just absolutely in the present moment, not worrying about the future, not worrying about the past. So as athletes, that's where we want to exist, but the same as people, because the moment we shift away from that present moment, our stress and anxiety comes from worrying about things that are going to happen or things that have already happened. So this program essentially tries to find all these different ways where you can just exist more often in the moment so that you enjoy, you know, your life more, your relationships, conversations, um, but even, mm. you know, 
pancakes and and what are, <laughs> whatever else you're in the moment more you know and um, yeah so that was that's part of it and it's also a personal development course where you start you know I don't know most athletes are all perfectionists and I think we're so hard on ourselves and the way we speak to ourselves is really brutal so this is about identifying you know like when did I develop this mindset as early as four years old uh, we're starting to have these like fixed mindsets where we're afraid of making mistakes because we don't want to look bad it's that simple and we keep doing that so as athletes you want to be a perfectionist but you're also afraid of making mistakes so it totally limits your potential it's really based on research how we talk to ourselves how we deal with mistakes but also the mindfulness piece kind of helps zen you out a little bit, but also just helps you slide into that present moment. That was a long-winded <laughs> version wow. of. Wow. Um, also, you can buy it online today. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> That's so impressive. And how do you find the time and energy to be doing all that, plus your soccer and your art? And Erin, I have to say, mentioned that she has had an art collection. She's sold all her pieces. She's designed tattoos that people are buying. Like, I mean, that must feel incredible too, to have people walking around with a permanent art piece that you designed. Yeah, it is. It gives me the chills just thinking <laughs> about yeah. it. No, it's, um, time management is, you know, something I think as athletes, it's funny, we have this job where we're committed like four or five hours and it takes a lot of our energy, but then we have time to do other things. So I think, for me, and actually now that I've learned way more about the brain, is we only have like a fixed amount of willpower. So planning is absolutely essential. So if I write in my agenda, tomorrow from two to three I'm doing this, from four to five I'm doing this, it actually like frees up willpower in your brain so that you need less motivation to do those things. So I find with time management, if you write it all down, you know, people always say write it down and I always had no idea what they're talking about. There's a science behind it. So my agenda is very full. <laughs> uh, but what's really important if you have a lot on your plate is having an end date or an end time. So no matter what, you shut off at 6 p.m., for example. And that promise, first of all, you make to yourself is really important. And then making sure that you have that cut off so that you can just relax and unwind. Tony, what are you doing between four and five tomorrow? <laughs> um, <laughs> watching TV. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I actually have a plan. <laughs> I have a question for yeah. you. So, last year obviously was very like challenging and trying for so many yes. different reasons and for many uh, people. Um, and then I think that kind of led me to get into meditation more. Mm. But I found that like sometimes it's really hard for me to like turn off my brain yeah. to other things and thoughts and stuff. So is there like a, like a trick or a tip that you, is it, is that okay? Is that normal? Like, am I bad at meditation? <laughs> <laughs> no one is bad at meditation. Um, no, I love the question and I get this all the time. The myth of meditation is you sit there and turn your brain off. So, um, having thoughts, we actually don't have very much control over the thoughts coming in and out of our brains, mm. but we do have control over our attention. So when you're meditating, for example, you will have lots of thoughts. And I was told that at the beginning too. And I was like, I'm horrible at meditation. I'm always thinking, but it's about like, think of your thoughts like passing cars. So next time you're meditating and you have a thought, instead of giving it your attention, you mm. also just let it mm. pass by just like that. And if you want, you can imagine that <laughs> sound. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, we, and we get attached to our thoughts and we think that they mean something, but oftentimes they're just, you know, passing through. And this is the same about athletes when we're talking to ourselves. Sometimes if we make a mistake, we're like, oh, I'm not good enough. I don't deserve to be a starter. And we make it mean all these things. Mm. Um, but you can just start uh, putting your attention into the thoughts like, okay, I pushed myself there. I made a mistake. And what can I learn from it? So because you are an artist, I, wow. well, it started out like this. It's a smiley face with a rogue eye. Yeah, okay. I don't know, it's a cyclops. It's fine. That is this was you before coming to Orlando and being in the Canadian darkness. <laughs> this is the hair though. I was in a bad spot no. when I met Allie before. The hair. <laughs> yeah, okay. This was after getting sunburned in Orlando. Oh, which took me about three you minutes. You know where your sunburn, girl. <laughs> and this is a flower. That's very beautiful. So. Now you have to make something for us. Okay. Okay. I'm on it. Okay. Give me a one moment. Yeah. Oh, and what do you? 
So how often do you make these pancakes, would you say? The ones of you or the... <laughs> yeah, is that every couple days? <laughs> every <or>? morning. <laughs> but in general, protein pancakes, at least once a week, and I'll do a huge batch. Okay, and okay. Then take them with me, have them in the fridge. It's like the best snack because... It's a smart idea when you said you like bring them to after training because, I mean, we're really lucky that we always have post-training meals and whatnot, but I should just bring a little pack in my glove bag during games because at halftime, yeah. I am ravenous. Yeah, and you guys have your little bags that you can carry with you. We can put whatever we want in there. Okay, you're avoiding the chocolate chips because you're worried they'll ruin my design. Yep. So what would you say your favorite vegan meal is? Being a oh flex, is that what I am then, a flexitarian? Yeah, I mean, how often do you eat vegetarian or vegan? When I'm with Tony. Okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> Once or twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think for me, I'm probably vegetarian 90% of the time. Okay, okay. Leaning towards vegan, but just because I have that little bit of fish or meat once in a while, yeah. you know, I don't want, I know, especially being vegan, it's not just about the food, it's a lifestyle and you know, yeah. I don't want to take away from that by, I definitely eat vegan food and Tony's teaching me so much about it, but I definitely still, still eat meat and fish sometimes and I think it's important to be honest about that. So yeah, but I think if you're interested in moving towards vegetarianism or veganism, but still have that, I don't know, flexitarian can be whatever you want, so. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I am aware of, yeah, I know that like a lot of meat consumption and it takes a lot of energy and pollution to, yeah. you know, and I know there's a reality to it, but I think for a long time I had this belief that um, vegetarian food or vegan food was a little bit like either limited or like complicated to make. And what I have appreciated being around both of you is we're always eating vegetarian or vegan and I can never tell that they are mm -hmm. vegan or vegetarian. You know, I feel like you don't actually have to change your life dramatically yeah. to, to live that way, which is really cool. You're welcome. Okay, the pan's ready. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. Um, oh. Wow. I mean, we haven't even talked about maple syrup. Oh. And that is one of our. Okay. Proudest. Aaron, that is um, so good. I'm just gonna. Thank you. Maybe we won't show my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you found another like career path. You think? Is yeah. this it? Yeah. Does that mean that I get a pancake design? Pancake oh, designer? I overdid it there though. It's Look. okay. Oh, poor little. <laughs> wow. Wow. Erin. Thanks. First try. Wow. Stop it. <laughs> Get lucky. I'm done with pancake design. Erin, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> I like this. This is for you, so you can. Um, we have two maple syrups here. <gasps> oh my god. And we need to know which one's the best one. Okay, so. One of them is from Vermont, the other one is US slash Canada. US slash Canada. From the whole. Both yes, countries. Exactly. <laughs> my goodness. Should I try with the spoons? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. nice. Then we'll know which one we want to put on our pancakes. Okay. Oh, you're putting on me. I mean, you needed a maple leaf for your pancake. Okay. It's not like where you have to like swirl this around. This one's a bit lighter. Swirl around and spit it out. Why? Do you want me to spit it back in? <laughs> <laughs> I'm offended. That one's not mine. Dang it. That was mine. It's thicker and has a little more oomph to it. Vermont does it again. Wow. Well, next time we'll have one from just Canada. Just Canada. Yes. It's pretty amazing. And they'll just like pour maple syrup on ice and you, you take it like a popsicle. Really? Yeah. It's so cool. Like, or like a snow cone, like crushed ice? Yeah, exactly. Interesting. But like real maple syrup is like very different than what you buy at the store. The maple is very intense and it is sh like sweet, but um, you taste more maple. Whereas I feel like the stuff you buy from the store, you taste more of the like sugar than you do the maple. Okay. Maybe I just don't know what maple tastes like. But this is like yeah. about 20% of a... We'll give it a whirl. Okay. <laughs> this, this, the dark Still color. good. 
<laughs> yes, thank you. Very excited. I feel like I've been staring at these pancakes for a while. <laughs> okay, Don't moment of truth. Out. Mm. Oh, good amount of chocolate. This tastes like a dessert. Mm. It tastes like a cookie. Mm -hmm. mm. Actually, <laughs> it literally tastes like a chocolate chip cookie. Mm -hmm. I can't even. Thank you, Erin, for joining us today and giving us some insight into your, your world in the mindfulness area. We really Thank appreciate you. it. Mm. We hope you enjoyed these lovely chocolate, chocolatey pancakes. You did a taste great job. We did a great yeah, job. I worked so hard, yeah. but now I, mean, I can relax. I mean, come on. <laughs> Look at this. Like, Aww. that is art. Mm -hmm.